Rolex has developed designs that have become incredibly recognizable, even if you're glancing at somebody's wrists across the room. But there is one watch in their catalog that doesn't look like the iconic Rolex watches that many of us have known and many of us love. And that watch is the Rolex Cellini. So let's take a look at hands-on review of one of the watches that make up the Rolex Cellini line and take a look at the backstory and why this watch for the most part has become a bit of an outcast. So let's jump into it. The Rolex Cellini line, like I mentioned, is a bit of an outcast when you look at the entire Rolex offering. The name of the line paying tribute to the great Italian goldsmith and sculptor from the Renaissance. However, to identify the true roots of this watch, we have to go back to the development of a 1928 release from Rolex with the Rolex Prince. The model was released shortly after the release of the iconic Rolex Oyster case, designed as a way to complement the sportier models with a rectangular Art Deco style watch. The watch never reached extreme popularity, however it did manage to obtain a production run for 20 years. The watch featured an hour and a second dial on the watch, and as a result was informally referred to as the doctor's watch, given its price and then the notable subseconds which made it easy to monitor patients' pulses. Throughout the mid 20th century, the Rolex Cellini line could probably be best summed up with the word random, as it was marked with different styles that hinted at the watch's inability to catch mass appeal. But this considered doesn't take away from the line actually offering some pretty unique pieces. The line never seemed to garner up the level of consistency and as a result led to some more adventurous offerings like the Chelinium with the platinum case. At the turn of the 21st century, the Cellini line was essentially a forgotten pursuit for Rolex until 2014 with the reissue of a new collection of Cellini models. Which brings us to the piece that I have in my possession here today, a Rolex Cellini time, reference 50505. So ever since seeing one of these watches, I've always been very intrigued about where this watch resides within the entire offering of Rolex, but also the entire offering of elegant looking dress watches in the industry in this price range. So first, before we proceed any further, big thank you to Boz Watches for sending me this watch. They're a partner of the channel, one of the largest online retailers in the world for pre-owned watches. And if you use the link in the description, if you wanna buy this watch or any other watch that they have available in their shop, and they have hundreds and hundreds of watches, not just Rolex, that's a way to support the content that you're watching, but just wanna thank them up front. So like I mentioned, this is the reference 50505, coming in with an Everose case. So the price here for retail is $15,200. On Bob's website, it's coming in $11,295. So case size here, looking at 39 millimeters, Thickness of 11 millimeters. Movement is Rolex Automatic 3132. Water resistance of 50 meters and has a dome sapphire crystal. So that Rolex 3132 movement has a 48 hour power reserve. So when looking at the actual case of the watch, it comes with that fluted bezel, but it does have much smaller rivets than that of many Oyster case models. It also has a dome upper portion of the bezel that is first to meet the crystal, which makes this fluted bezel hallmark a bit more hidden compared to other counterparts within the Rolex lineup of watches. All this lends to the watch looking more elegant in its design, in my opinion. When flipping this watch around with the case back, in similar Rolex fashion, it has a solid case back, which I have mixed feelings about as this dial screams hand-wound dress watch that should have a fully exposed movement on the back, but given the watch is featuring an automatic 3132 movement and probably isn't going to be decorated like a Longa Vacheron Patek, I don't think we're missing out entirely, especially because we're gonna be having a rotor here that's gonna hide most of that movement as well. The watch wears pretty small on the wrist given its 39 millimeter case. Actually, it wears very comparably to a traditional 36 millimeter case, an Oyster case, as the watch comes in with a 45 millimeter lug to lug height. When putting it on the wrist, this becomes incredibly evident. For reference, my wrist is coming in at six and a quarter inches. The watch also comes with a leather alligator strap with an 18 karat gold Rolex buckle to match the case. So when moving to the dial, we have a rather unique design. And when looking at it at first glance, you probably wouldn't be able to tell that you're looking at a Rolex apart from the name on the dial. The dial sports an interesting mix of slim Roman numerals at the hour markings at the 12, three, six, and nine, with split applied indices at the other hour markings, housing the minute numerals within. The shorter Dauphine style hands in this case work as a result given the minute markings landing closer towards the center of the dial. But one small little nitpick of this watch, when glancing at the dial, say you look away and you're looking down at the watch, I could see it being harder to identify 
Uh, because both of the hands are a little bit shorter than a lot of different watches that you might find on the market, harder to uh, differentiate between the two with the hour and the minute hand as I think they're pretty comparable in their overall size. But that's a small nitpick here. At the 12 o'clock, we see a traditional Rolex logo adorned with the iconic crown above. This is balanced out with the cursive writing of Cellini at the six o'clock in white, matching the color of the Roman numerals on the dial as well. The dial color, black, but it also can be found in different color options. Personally, I think I like the actual white variations a little bit more. However, this black dial does work incredibly well with that Ever Rose case. But the interesting thing about this watch is really where it's positioned at within Rolex's lineup of watches, as well as where it falls in the market, given its retail price of $15,200 which all I feel leads to this watch getting glanced over by many luxury watch enthusiasts. And looking at it, it truly is a fantastic looking piece that I think brings something unique to the Rolex line, certainly. However, begs the question, who is the buyer for this watch? Does it bring enough to the table to pull a potential buyer away from Alanga, a Patek, Vacheron, or Breguet? Or does it offer a unique enough proposition to a Rolex buyer that perhaps wants something different? than what the steel sports lineup can offer. But I think it does bring into play, why do people buy Rolex watches? Of course, for people that love watches, I think they can look past the amount of status that comes with buying one. But for the mass appeal market out there where people are, and that's mostly where many Rolex buyers reside, does this answer that call of giving that same status element and doing it at a price where it makes sense? I think that is why this overall model has struggled, which I think is truly unfortunate because I really believe this is one of the most beautiful, from my, of course, opinion, uh, Rolex watches that you can find. So are these watches worth it? You know, it's up to the buyer, but I will say this, if you are buying this pre-owned because, I mean, there is negatives that go along with these watches and the fact that they don't demand as much on the secondary market, but if you're able to get in on that and capitalize on that secondary market, you can find these watches for significantly cheaper than the retail price, something that you can't say about many Rolex watches. And if you can do that, say on the 10,000 10, to $15,000 range on that lower end, find one of these watches, and you're looking for a very elegant looking dress watch and don't necessarily need the status element that comes with Rolex, I think these are very interesting watches to consider. And I really hope that this Rolex Cellini timeline can start getting a little bit more attention, but I really hope that Rolex doesn't push these watches to the wayside once again, because I think it does bring something unique to the table. And that's something you can't always say about some Rolex watches, as I think a lot of their designs have just been the same for so many years. Don't fault them for it, but it is something to think about. So guys, what do you think of this watch? Is this a watch that you would ever consider if you had the money or if you do have the money? And would you ever purchase it instead of maybe going for a Patek, a Longa, or a Vacheron, for example? Uh, I'd love to see comments down below. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. Also subscribe, hit the bell icon as well. And guys, if you wanna purchase this watch or any other watch using the link in the description of Bob's Watches, that is a great way to help out the channel and the content that you're watching, as well as going over to our website, buying a watch strap. And then also, if you wanna get a little bit of love back, join our watch giveaway by filling out the watch giveaway form and then following me on Instagram. So guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.